divided by 7 is 42 beats per minute. Okay, now let's just check the RR interval. The R interval is too long. Ooh, and it's increasing. And then it's really increasing. And there's a so when there's an increase and there is so so the R interval is definitely um like you saying R. The PR interval is definitely increasing. And after there is an increase in the PR interval, there's a drop in the QR segment. In the QRS segment. So this P wave has no um accommodating QRS um complex. So this is what we call as a second degree AV block type one. The other one we're gonna look at is a uh, second degree AV block type two, where there is um, um, PR. There is PR um, prolongation, but it's constant, just like AV one, just like first degree. It's constant, and then there's a drop beat. So you have a constant prolongation. So this is constant increase, constant increase constant increase but then there's a dropped beat so this is what we call as a second degree AV block type 2 okay so type 3 um, type 3 is a very complex one and type 3 um, we have it's very difficult to explain with the type 3 but I will try my best so this RR intervals is definitely prolonged so this is um, a bradycardic um, arrhythmia but the RR intervals are equal. And are there any P waves? So this is a P wave. This is a P wave. This is, you may be tempted to say that this is a, net, a T wave, but this is a P wave. This is a P wave. This is a P wave. So the RR intervals are equal and the P waves are there. But the P waves are not where they're supposed to be. For example, this P wave is joining with the T wave, making this M shape thing. And this P wave is even before the um, T wave but there are P waves and there's no prolongation in the P PR segment and the R intervals are equal so this is what we call as a third degree block now idioventricular arrhythmia this one is very pathognomonic it's going to be exactly like this um, there's not much to um, try and explain you just have to remember that this is what it looks like and this is obviously an increase in um, um, or decrease in heart rate because they're like I can't really see this but this is definitely more than um, let's count it one two three four five six seven eight nine almost nine boxes so three hundred three hundred divided by nine is 33 bits per minute so um, this is pathognomonic so it will always look like this and idioventricular arrhythmias usually occur after a provision in a um, Am I? So I'm just gonna. Um, this was. I hope you understand what I tried to explain. Um, I'm just gonna tell you the um, treatments for all of, all of them. Um, I won't go into depth. But for the fast rhythms, if the patient is unstable, um, you shock them with a defibrillator. However, if they're stable um, for supraventricular tachycardia, you give adenosine. For sinus tachycardia, you do nothing because this is the person exercising. This is the normal response to when you're um, exercising or when you're running, whatever. However, um, if the patient is stable for AFib, you give beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Um, that's rapamil or diltiazem. Um, for ventricular tachycardia, you give amidurin. Um, for ventricular arrhythmia, you always shock. Um, Toss as the point, you give magnesium sulfate. And for all slow rhythms, um, if the patient is unstable, you pace them. Um, for if they're stable, for um, first degree AV block and second degree AV block, you can give them um, atropine. However, do not give atropine for second degree um, type 2, as it can precipitate them into degree um, AV block and for idioventricular rhythm the treatment is you do nothing you're not supposed to do anything it's usually self-limiting and it goes away on its own All right so before I end I'm just gonna um, give some um, a little quiz so that we uh, know what we're talking about okay so remember the first thing I um, we have to do before um, identifying arrhythmia is we need to know the heart rate right so let me just get my um, pen so we can work this one out together so the first thing we need to do let me just turn it into red okay we need to know whether this is 
um, tacky or pretty. So we get an arrow. Oh, this is not good. Let me just get the pen. So we need to know whether this is tacky. So between this RR interval, um, so we're just going to work this one out together. Uh, there are two large boxes. So 300 divided by 2 is 150. Okay. Are there any um, P, P waves? Right. So there are P, um, P waves and this is tachycardia. So this is um, sinus tachy. Sinus tach. Okay, I hope you guys got this one with me. Um, it, remember, please pause the video um, so you can answer them for yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to show you them and then you can pause it at the design, design, designated spots to um, answer them on your own. The second one we're going to do is here. So first we need to find the rate. So between those R intervals is just two um, big boxes. So 300 divided by 2 is 150. So this is tachycardia. Anything greater than 100 is tachycardia. Um, are there any P waves? Well, uh, there's a P wave here, um, but there's no T wave. But there's, but there's a. Um, so here's a P wave. We might think this is the P wave, but if this is a P wave, is this the T wave for this one? No. And if this is the T wave um, for this one, where's the P wave for that one? So remember, I said that when we have tachycardia and there are no P waves and the RR intervals are regular because these ones are regular, this is what we call a supraventricular cardio right next one we have here is oh the r interval is really long it's like one two three four five six seven eight and a half so it's like um eight and a half let me count this again so it's like one two three four five six seven eight eight and a half so 300 divided by 8.5 Oh, 35 bits per minute. Okay. So this is 35 bits per minute. Are there P waves? So there's one P wave. There's another P wave. There's P wave. So this is definitely bradycardic. And si so this is sinus brady. Okay, I hope you guys got this one. <laughs> it's really hard to type with this. Okay. So now let's just do another one. Uh, let's just take an R interval. So this R interval is um, 300 divided by 2 is definitely 150. However, there are different R intervals. So this is definitely irregular because this is um, definitely irregular. There are no P waves. So like I said, remember I said that anything when there is irregular and there are no discernible P waves, this is AFib. Hope you get, got this one as well. So let's just try another one. Uh, this one is less than um, one big box. So it's if it's less than one big box, it's technically 300 bits per minute. Um, uh, the QRS complexes are definitely wider than um, four small boxes. So this is, um, and it's on a straight line. So this is VFib. Hope you guys got this one too. And how do we treat VFib? We shock them, right? Okay, so here's this one. Um, this one is a bonus one. You don't really have to. Um, this one, this one, you don't really have to calculate, but it's a bonus one. There's sort of pattern right here in the P waves. So this is a flutter. So this is just a bonus, right? A flutter. Okay, so how do we treat um, <clears throat> um, sinus tap? We don't treat because it's normal um, process that we our body does. SV, um, supraventricular tachycardia, if the patient is unstable, we shock them. If the patient is um, um, stable, we give them um, adenosine. Sinus braid is normal um, process. Um, AFib, if the patient is unstable, we shock them. If the patient is stable, we give them AFib. Sorry, we give them um, calcium channel blocker, blockers or beta blockers. And VP, I said we shock them. So this is completes the um, arrhythmia lecture. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you at least just understand that it doesn't have to be difficult. Just sit down and go for it. I just need to know the rate. You need to know um, narrow and wide and you'll be, you'll definitely understand it. Good luck guys.